Hi, I'm Kathy Holden. I'm here at scrapbook.com with my new exciting paper products with Spellbinders. And today I'm going to show you one of my favorite projects that you can make with something as simple as chipboard and tape. So let's get started on this really fun project. Well, here's an example of the project we're gonna be working on with little display holders. Um, you can use family photos. We're going to be working with my new ephemera packs, lots of stickers, lots of options for stickers, and paper pads. This is the blue-green pad, and this one is floral, the floral palette. All right, let's get started. Here's just a piece of plain chipboard, and I'm going to cut the front of the house and the back of the house. Um, the size I chose is four and a quarter by three, but you can wing it. You don't have to have any measurements in mind. You can just kind of start cutting and decide what, uh, what looks good for you. So, And always remember when you're using a craft knife to be safest, always have a sharp blade because a sharp blade is always a safer blade. And make several passes instead of putting a lot of pressure to do just one pass. Then it's a little safer and uh, I think you'll have better luck with your cut. These mats with a grid are just so great for um, lining up. If you have a guillotine cutter, that works really nice as well. Something that will cut through chipboard. And now I'm going to cut... Uh, the roof angles, um, just kind of whatever feels right. I always like getting a little bit asymmetrical. It feels more whimsical to me to not be perfectly, um, you know, like an actual perfect house. Something like that. It's nice to just to be able to use the original piece as a sort of shim for cutting the secondary piece. I always hang on to these. These are really good um, for scraping glue across things, so I never get rid of bits. I have little containers of bits all over the studio. So that's my house, front and back, and to do the walls, it's as simple as cutting um, one inch strips from your remaining uh, chipboard. I'll just align it like this. You could take a mark. We're going to have a separate roof piece. So the roof itself will actually have two layers. You'll see when we get to that point what that means. And then I have another piece be the floor. And what I'll do is I'll cut all these little pieces. Those will be the walls. And then I'll come back on the roof a little bit later once we've assembled the house. So now I have my house and my sides. So let's go like that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of this best ever tape from uh, Spellbinders, which works really great with this project, and just tape on all the sides. You don't have to go all the way to the end. This is kind of just enough to secure the walls.
I'm going to turn this piece over and bring in, kind of got backwards, bring in the walls and the ceiling or the roof. Um, and when you put them together, you're going to almost let them touch, but not quite. Don't make too big of a gap because what we want is enough tension as we bring these around. See how everything swapped? Um, to keep the walls from collapsing. So just a very slight gap in there. Now we're going to go around and tape just the same way we did here, but we're going to do it again. So now I have the outer edges of the walls taped. I'll flip that over and I'll grab the other side of the house. So I'll, I'll line that up like this, bring it down and tape it at the bottom. Now here's the fun part, just bringing it all together. I'm going to leave the largest section of the roof open because next we're going to fill it with rice so that it doesn't tip over when it has the display finished. All right, I have my rice. So this is just plain white rice. I pay maybe a dollar a bag for the stuff I'm going to craft with. Don't use brown rice. Brown rice can spoil, but the white rice should last to infinity, we hope, right? I'll grab my little house and I'll just start filling it up and I'll probably fill it to about two thirds of the way. That feels good. So we'll close this up. I'm going to come back and do some tape uh, just around the edges. Like this, around where the corners meet. That'll help keep the rice in. At least until we can start collaging. There's the house. So then I'm going to take um, my I one and a quarter strip and cut it for the roof. Kind of decide what I like as far as the eaves hanging over. That's about right for me, like this. And then I'll take that and tape those together. Right, butt it up together like that. When I get to adding paper to this, I'm going to keep it at a bend as I decorate. So to decorate this one, I'm going to use my Blue Greens palette sampler. Pick out a really fun background paper. I like this one. This is from a vintage book that I have. What I'm going to do is just wrap the paper around it like that. I'm going to leave some on the bottom that's going to fold up. That should do. I'm going to cover this with this matte gel medium. I like the matte because it doesn't leave a, a shine on the outside where the glue hit it and where the glue didn't. You can't tell the difference. I do like sometimes with these papers when they're left with a matte finish to them, the finished products. So I'm just going to cover this all and then wrap it around the house. I'll leave a little bit at the bottom there to uh, wrap under. We'll just do this. Overlap. Anywhere you've got these little corners, 
you go in and make a little triangle cut. Get a little more glue in there and then just fold them in. And then do the same here. You can trim this down a little bit. The top of the house is going to be covered with a roof. So if it's a little bit uh, rough at the top with your fold over, you'll be fine. All right, now let's add some, I think some flowers to that. Let me grab my flower pad. Now I'm gonna pull from my florals palette sampler. There's a really great pink one in here, sort of pinks and reds that I love. sure why I actually like tearing sometimes better than cutting. I just like the effect of that. I'm going to fold that in half again. And I'm going to go about fussy cutting out this rose. I really like this rose with that little blue flower and the leaf for the front. I think that'll look nice. And then I like using the brush just to press it down. Keeps your hands clean. Once that dries, I'm going to attach that to the back. Okay, that's the house covered. Now let's do the roof. I'm gonna put my tape side up. Now if you're cutting through uh, medium adhesive or anything. Be sure you clean off your scissors as soon as you're done with your project. Just kind of getting rid of those corners so these fold up nicely. Keep it bent. I'll need a little notch in there. All right, so that's going to be ready to go. And what you can use is um, a craft, and you know, craft glue to keep that on top. You can try using your medium as well. Um, I'm going to use this smart craft glue. When I put my roof on, I like having mine. If I'm this is the front of my house, I like mine hanging over the front more than the back. If you want a wider roof, just cut it your strips wider, and it's hanging off the front and the back. But I like mine where it's flush in the back like that, and then the shadows cast just over the front 
as it hangs over. I'll grab a couple of rubber bands. And while it dries, we'll just keep it banded and attached. There. So as soon as that's dry, I'll come back and add my stickers and stamps. So I'd like to use a rubber stamp. Uh, this is my new collection of clear stamps with spellbinders. Um, this is one of my favorites. I always like to cancel things to make it look like a stamp, like I'm a little poster worker working to cancel things as they come through. Um, the nice fun thing about my flea market finds collection is it's, it's a very random, um, you know, they may not make a lot of sense, but it's like when you go to the flea market and you look in your trunk after you've been shopping, they don't all match, but they all somehow just go together. So it's a little bit eclectic. Uh, this is always a fun one to use um, to make little seals, um, little stickers, also to kind of cancel and uh, put along the edge of something to join to, to graphics. Um, when you're using something that has kind of a give on it, like this little house might have some give, sometimes you won't get a nice good stamping. So something that's small like this, I can go, uh, you know, forego using the block and just put it on my finger, put it on the ink pad, and then put it into the um, item I'm going to stamp. So if it's a really tiny one, you can do that on these to give. But if it's a hard, hard surface like this, I recommend using, you know, an acrylic block. Here's some fun frames. I really like these. These stamp so lovely on uh, paper, and then you can cut them out and make your own ephemera. Some words. Again, some random graphics. One of my favorites. I think today I'd like to use the word family. My, tree, my uh, house is going to be family. I think instead of stamping right onto the house, I'm going to find a sticker in my sticker pack to stamp to. Here's some fun stickers in the Butler's Variety Pack. When I first get my stickers, I like to... I like to pick a page and I actually remove the backing. Then I can see how much of the actual label I have to work with because some of the ink does bleed over for the purpose of cutting these out and manufacturing. There, now I have a, a little bit clearer view of what, what I have and the, the sizes that I have. Um, I think since we're doing roses, I'm going to stick with the rose theme and use this one. I think my family stamp will fit just right on that. I like using um, this archival ink because it dries very fast and it's permanent. And if I do decide to go over the entire thing with a medium or make it shiny, I'm not smearing the ink. So this is very permanent. I always like running things off the edge, sort of like an old cigar box, how the labels on the outside tend to always be wrapping around one edge or another. I like that look. I think I'll flip through and see what other kind of fun things I can find. It'd be nice to pick up some of this blue. I'll try one of these again. Let's take this off and see what we have. A sticker pad is like having a lot of extra ephemera, but it's cataloged so you can flip page by page and see what you have. So sometimes you might find um, the adhesive isn't super strong, which I like because it makes it removable. If I mess up, I'm able to come and take it off and replace it in a different, I do this all the time. Um, and after a while it'll stick for good, but uh, you can always glue stick if you prefer to do that just to make it completely permanent um, or use your medium again. I like it right here. This reminds me of a tax stamp that wraps around on a cigar box. 
Yeah, that looks paint. And you don't have to stay completely um, horizontal. Let's get let's get vertical. Why not? Oh, this is a funny one. This one, the inspection sticker. I like that. I like combining um, stamps by uh, like putting almost like a seal on top. Sometimes if a stamp is just floating, if this didn't have anything grounding it like this sticker, I would maybe add that. It, it does feel like it grounds the sticker to the graphics. I like that. The problem you have with these sticker pads and some of this ephemera is you don't know when you can, you know, when do you stop because it's just so much fun to keep adding. I think I like, let's see how much space we have on that one. See how little they got? I love it. All right, cute. Well, we have to stop at some point, maybe. No, I like this one too. Maybe that one. See how they can just kind of come off while you're repositioning? I love that feature. That's good. Save your bits. You never know when you could use it on a tiny project. These are fun one inch rounds to work with. Okay, it's time to stop with the stickers. I could go on all day. It's so much fun. Okay, let's work on adding the display rods to the top of the house. I like making these display pieces to add to houses, to vintage salt and pepper shakers, anything um, that would make a nice display for attaching family photos or ephemera. So to make these, you can use something as simple as jewelry wire. Um, I wouldn't get any finer than 20 gauge because it would it may not hold the weight of what you're putting in it um, you know and these come in different colors and um, metals you can also use a bamboo skewer and just hot glue a little um, clothespin to the top and in a pinch you can just splice down the top of the skewer place a paper clip inside um, get some hot glue around it and then I use a silicone pad to press the hot glue while it's cooling and then I can trim away any large blobs on the edges so this works also my favorite wire to use is actually very inexpensive it's just floral stem wire it usually comes in packs of say 25 to 50 like this and they're nice and long and they're straight and they're not wound you don't have to try to straighten them yourself. They're already straight. And to make this loop, I'm gonna use something as simple as a glue stick. You can make a tiny loop over a, you know, a marker. You can make a bigger loop over something like a paint bottle, but we're gonna just use this today. So what I have are uh, round nose jewelry pliers. 
These also happen to cut the wire, which is sort of a bonus, but uh, sometimes you can just use the pliers and an additional uh, just set of wire cutters. I'm going to pull the uh, cap off of that just so that the wire doesn't catch on it. And I'm going to place the end of the wire like this on the barrel and then wrap it around twice. Try to keep it really close to itself like that. This is a, a pretty wide gap, so we're going to have to kind of come back and finesse because what we definitely need is for two ends of those, or at least two sides of that to touch somewhere. So that's going to be a little better. And I'm going to bend this back on itself like that. And then I'm going to trim away part of this um, tail. Now I needed that much to hold it to the glue stick, but to curl the end of it, it's a little long. So I'm going to put this uh, away from my face and in a safe area and snip that off. Make sure those tend to shoot away. And then I'm just going to curl this end of the wire like that. So there's one. You can do this where you bend the your long stem back maybe farther over here, and then your little loop is kind of offset, but I like it right there. And Like I said, you have to have some part of the sides touching so that it will grip anything that you place inside of it. I like to make a lot of these and I have them on hand because I never know when I'm going to use them. So I'm going to take three of these today to use in my project. And I like to offset them kind of like that and decide from here where, how long I want them to be. That looks pretty good. And then I'll know where to, to cut my, um, my wires. Now, to poke them into the top of the house, we're going to need some pilot holes, and I'm just going to use uh, this tool and one from Spellbinders to poke my holes. And we're going to go through the roof and through the top of the house. So I think I'll do two on one side and one on the other, and then I'm going to offset them. So I wouldn't put them just in a row like this. I would put maybe one towards the back, one towards the front, and then again, maybe one towards the back, so that when the display is finished, the pieces in the display won't bump into each other so easily. So straight up and down. Just poke. And in go the rods. You can take these in and out at any time, move them around. But these two are really fun to decorate. Okay, now I'm going to have some fun with my Meadowlark miscellany printed die cuts. Um, what I like to do with my die cut packs is I go ahead and I just unload them into a little tray so it looks a little easier to pick through to decide what I'm going to use. And my theme is family, so I think I'd like to actually start with. Um, a vintage photo of family. So I like to use vintage photos. Um, I keep some on hand for my crafts. It's always fun when they have a nice blank space you can add a sticker or something to. But I'm going to stick with a little family for today. And some of the uh, ephemera that I picked out to use, uh, I kind of like the colors. They seem to go well with the house. Um, these are some I think will look nice in the display. Here's this one, little prize ribbon. It's always fun to um, add little bits to the ephemera to make it look um, pretty authentic, and it's good to have little wiggles in your display, I think. I think for this, just to give it a little more authenticity, I think I'll make it look like a torn stamp, so... A rough tear like that. That'd be nice. This is fun. This is like a little leather wallet, and um, 
I'm just going to slice the little pockets and then we can add things inside. There's a pocket. There's a little tiny coin pocket. There's a big one, a little bit of a curve on this last one. Cute. I think maybe I'll use the shorter part of the journal stamps. Let it go in there. Like this. That. And then I think that's pretty good. Well, maybe something else. That's kind of fun. And then I want to just do some tape on the back or I can add another, add a sticker, something uh, that you can see from the back side. I think for now I'm just going to tape them all in place. Like that. As you get going, you can kind of decide maybe you want your rod a little bit shorter if your paper is a little bit tall. Yeah, that looks good. Put this in here. Don't add that down there. I like the butterflies. I just bend the wings back. Add a little glue. Stick it to the picture. I'm going to go through my stickers. I'm going to add some things to the rods themselves. So maybe something like this. Let's make sort of a sort of a waving flag. I want to go ahead and line this up before I stick it to the rod. It's going to make it a lot easier now than trying to put it on the rod and then line it up. Slip it on. Be a little flag. And I think I'll even cut a little fishtail in the end. And give it a little bend. Like it's waving in the wind. And I feel like we could put maybe another sticker or two on those rods. Let's do this. Again, I'm going to go ahead and line these up first. And then I'll add it to the rod. If you have any little jump rings, take your jewelry pliers. You can add another little bit of motion to your display by adding these little charms, do little paper charms, or you can just use a hole punch and create your own. All right, let's stand this up and look at our finished display. Okay, I'm finished. Well, at least for today. I'll probably change these out over the next few weeks. Um, they're just so fun to have around my studio or in my house, and I can change out the pictures of the ephemera because nothing's completely permanent in these rods. So um, have fun with your house display, and I can't wait to see what you make.